Thank you, and thank you as always to the Dinner in Hell band and our studio audience. Good evening, and welcome back for another exciting episode of Dinner in Hell, the podcast where we talk about the atrocious underbelly of history. That is me, Brad the Impaler, and my co-host, the real Ron Maiden. What's up, homie? I'm doing good. It's great to be here on this beautiful day. Excellent. What do we have on the table today for discussion? Tonight, Ronson, my good man, we will be talking about a fucking bananas phenomenon that occurred in Renaissance France in 1518. Which is? Well, around 400 people started dancing, and they didn't stop until they died. Until they dropped dead. Yeah, started dancing, kept kept doing it, and then they just died. This is before techno, this is before rave parties. Yeah, as far as we know, ecstasy was not a contributing factor to this. Okay. <laughs> Nor any other club drug. Let's go. But you should always get your pills tested. Take me back to 1518. <laughs> All right, so July 1518 in the Alsace in eastern France, a woman identified as Frau Trophy walked out into the street in Strasbourg and started dancing. We're talking I know her as Frau Truffet or Truffaut. Well, say it like a French, like Alex Trebek would say. I, <laughs> my French pronunciation is garbage. Truffet? I, I don't know. It's terrible. Let me pull but it Frau is German, but <sighs> I don't know how the hell you would pronounce that name in German anyway. Okay. Yeah. So Frau Truffet walks out of her front door into the street in Strasbourg and just starts dancing. Just dancing. Yeah. She's dancing. Okay. It after uh is she celebrating something? Did she get a promotion at the bakery at the stable? No, nobody knows what the hell she's doing it for. Okay. To this day? Yeah, no nobody she's, knows to this day. She's just got that fever. Yeah, I I suppose who hasn't? I mean, who hasn't just stepped outside and just dan- just danced it out <laughs> well, once in her twice in her life, you know? Even if it's not raining, I no one could just go out on my sidewalk and spin around a few times, just dance a little bit, come back in, no big deal. Yeah. You just sometimes you just have to feel come, the rhythm. Come back in, get dressed. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that's, uh, that was that took me a minute to get it. That was a good one. <laughs> Low brow, high brow. Oh yeah. So, so a, a week after she starts dancing, to everyone's befuddlement the number of people that were affected by this went up to 35. Yeah, like her neighbors are looking out their windows and, you know, they see her dancing, spinning around out in the field. I imagine it's a field, like a beautiful sunny field. And also, (laughs) yeah, a week after this, she's already dead at this point. She died four to six days after she started. What happened to Frau? Frau? Yeah, she... She couldn't couldn't handle her dancing. (laughs) She had either a stroke or a heart attack or died of exhaustion, just keeled over dead because she didn't stop dancing for four for four straight days okay so we're at 30 of her friends and neighbors yes. are now joining the the sensation mm-hmm. all all the, the people of Strasbourg were were desperate for help with this because as you can imagine it would be distressing to see this occurring in your town so the the people of Strasbourg were pretty distressed by this as i imagine anyone would be if if, if the people in my town 30 of them were just out dancing and i assume several were dead by this point i'd be uh, concerned i'd I'd wonder if i was gonna be two-stepping my way out the front door next yeah it started with like five people doing pokemon go up at the park and then all of a sudden there's like 30 like every day (laughs) like what the pokemon go plague of 2016 yeah people drops were all taken over people dropped dead to pokemon go because they couldn't stop chasing invisible stuff did they no oh man, that would have been too good no don't check your facts on that one i was just going on just a hunch just following my gut on that one man so they they were after any kind of help they could get so they pulled in their local physicians and the the physicians seem they said it wasn't anything supernatural hmm. and they they instead determined that the dancing was caused by hot blood okay so that's an easy fix eh yeah what, uh, whatever the hell that means. <laughs> they would. Well, how'd they fix it? Well, yeah. Usually <laughs> they would fix everything by bleeding. Yeah. It, they would just 
let some blood out of you and then it was supposed to make you better somehow yeah. um but for whatever reason in this case that's not what they prescribed they prescribed dancing yeah yeah you have a fever of dancing and the only cure is more dancing right guys 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 <laughs> babies babies <laughs> need more dancing yeah that's what they said they they wanted the people who were dancing to keep dancing more and then what did the government do for them to, to would they provide for these people yeah they tried to do the right thing so they started opening up buildings and putting up stages and they were hiring musicians to play around the clock to facilitate the dancing yeah i mean if 30 people dancing to no music you know they're like you know what these guys need some music get the accordion get up there on the hill and play for these people yeah i wonder if they were like really really good musicians like i wonder if they got the best or or they just like grabbed some bucket players yeah like some, <laughs> some randos and gave them some instruments and told them to dick around but or did they bring in like the best bards all the best uh musicians around to play like uncle cracker goes back in time and he's like <laughs> playing for these people dancing what's the song he had yeah because i mean i guess the the like the ger like the german slash french peasantry of strasbourg would be equivalent to hillbillies it would have been possibly very bizarre because there's conflicting reports about how the dancers were behaving isn't there well, there's also conflicting reports on the music scene in Strasbourg because it wasn't known as much of a music hotbed at all. That was more of like the northern region of France, like near Paris. Yeah, that's where all the, the good underground stuff was coming out, wood, all the groundbreaking. All the good woodwind and, and string instrumental people out there. I mean, Strasbourg was like, psh, yeah, they wasn't barely, even on the radar. They barely even heard of chamber music down there. Right. Like They're like, harpsichord, what's that? Like. <laughs> Yeah. Please. We just played brass and buckets down here. Strasbourg sucked music wise. Yeah. Imagine so, imagine trying to form like a post punk band in fucking Wyoming. <laughs> right. I mean, then you become slipknot. I don't know. Yeah. And that's just a shame for everybody. <laughs> there are conflicting reports on the way they danced and what their what their what the dancers were experiencing. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, some places it seemed like they were just dancing like they were kind of normal yeah like uh, as far as their facial expression there were people that said that they danced like just you know like they were in no pain and enjoying themselves yeah and there's other reports that are saying they danced like animals and spun around in circles like out of their mind yeah, so in in one way it would be kind of like a really like a tight like a party full of really really tired people, I guess. <clears throat> but then in another way, it could be this horrifying spectacle where it's full of like willing musicians on a stage, but full of people like suffering some horrible way and dancing against their wills. That would have been insane to see. Yeah. Well, let's talk about what some people say is the cause. Yeah. Well, the, the main sort of theory about what could have caused this is a, an epidemic of the ergot fungus, mm -hmm. which is poisonous that grows on grains like rye. Mm -hmm. And it has effects that are similar to LSD, but not pleasant. E I spent some time researching ergot and the effects of it. Not saying I was trying to score some for myself, but uh, everything I found about it was saying that, yes, it's like LSD, but as none of it is a, a pleasure. It's the worst parts of LSD. You have awful visions. You have mania, dementia. So you're like out of your mind on this mm, ergot. There's, yeah. there's also reports of seizures or vomiting, you know, losing your bodily fluids in all ways. Mm. Now, it's never a pleasant altered state that you experience. It's always crazy. So that kind of goes against how we've described their faces. 
if it was this ergot fungus that was growing on the rye and all the other grains that were like in breads and stuff and you know some reports were saying that their faces were happy and stuff dancing so if they were on this ergot they wouldn't have a happy face they would probably be a terrified face so that kind of goes with the report of them dancing like animals yeah that makes that seem a lot more likely but then again what are we talking about here we're talking about they they either enjoyed this dancing or they hated it so we we have to go on two different roads but yeah er, i almost i almost find it difficult to believe that they could even believe that they were enjoying it after a full day it would be horrible you'd be so exhausted the only way you could continue is to be out of your mind yeah they'd have to be just sort of because there's i mean you even were telling me about marathon runners couldn't even endure the duration of these dances yeah, the, they said marathon runners wouldn't even be able to endure what they went through. So they couldn't have done it and been pleasant. I really don't think that's likely. I mean, it's it's possible if you're under the influence of something. It's it's possible. Yeah. But it, the, it seems a lot more likely that it would be the lynchian, animalistic, horrible scene that we've <laughs> described earlier. Yeah. That seems like the more likely one, but also, honestly, the one I'd rather see. That sounds interesting as hell to me. Let me ask you a question, personal question. Have you mm-hmm. ever, da- have you ever, on your own, chose to dance in public? No. Me neither. I don't think unless I've ever. I, unless I was joking. Besides, like in a mosh pit, you know, like getting crazy and like running around. Yeah, I've never. I suppose that does qualify as dancing. When I was little, see, I'm I'm a couple years ahead of you. When I was little, we had break dancing, so we all could like robot and like backspin and centipede and all that. Car- get the cardboard out, get, lay your ass down, spin around your back. I got a boom box. Yeah, now it kind of seems like dancing's cool again. Dance teams, maybe. Yeah, there's like dance teams, and you'll see videos of people dancing. People seem to enjoy it. Like, it seems kind of cool again. But for my entire life, dancing wasn't cool. So I don't know how to do it. I have no desire to do it. That's another thing that makes this disorder so bizarre. Yeah, never danced. Yeah, not much of a dancer. Have you ever taken ergot? No. It's not a, it's not available on Amazon. I checked for you. <laughs> I don't think I'd be willing to take that chance for the sake of the show. I was looking up ergot just to like put in my my enemy's food. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know they. You gotta try it. this. This brownies are amazing. I made a batch for you. <laughs> batch like, of ergot brownies. Give it to them like the day before their like day off, so they don't like go to work all messed up. They can stay home and wake out. You know how there's stories of the CIA doing, um, putting uh, hallucinogenics in people's drinks, like at nightclubs, just to watch them how they react in the public. Mm-hmm. What was it called? It was called MK Ultra. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'd be funny if, like, in Strasbourg, France, you had like these guys freaking like testing out the ergot portions on people. Like, oh my god, we gotta stop this! Look what's happening. It the was whole probably, town's da- it they're was, all dancing. It was probably just the CIA. Back Time then. traveled back to Strasbourg. God damn it. Welcome to Conspiracy Hour. <laughs> like my, I got my mother's out there dancing. God damn it. It's far enough. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't. It's gone too far. We didn't say nothing about loved ones. <laughs> they must dance. Did you have other possible causes for this outbreak? Yes. Um, another possible cause is just mass psychosis that they had some sort of shared delusion brought on by the stress of the horrible conditions that they were in. Uh, by all accounts, life in in Strasbourg in fifteen eighteen was really awful. There were riddled with starvation and disease. There were people starving all over the place. Mm-hmm. It is. A horrible, horrible existence they were going through. So it's also theorized that that could be one of the causes. But 400, but those shared delusions always seem, on some level, incredible. Because there's, how would it affect that many people? But at the same, as much as that feels incredible, I know that that occurs. Now, you just mentioned the, the fact that they're malnourished and starving everywhere. 
we just said how there are marathon runners today that couldn't endure this duration. And these marathon runners are on the, the highest, the, the most nutritional diet you can be on. Mm-hmm. Now let's go back to Strasbourg in 1500s where these, how, how would their bodies have the calories to create the physical energy to do this exercise for that long? You know I, what I mean? Yeah, I have no idea. So boom, now they're dropping dead. It's just sheer... Dead. Yeah, it's just, and even up to that point, it's just sheer mind over matter. It's just sheer will. It's not your mind anymore, apparently. Yeah, it's 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 either diluted by a mental illness or a psychedelic fungus that you yeah, ingested. or the psychedelic fungus from hell that makes you suffer. Yeah, the, like the worst trip of all bad trips. Yeah, those are really the two the two sort of competing explanations for this and this is not an isolated incident people have broken into dancing plagues like this around that time as well this just happens to be the one where the most people were affected some people have also theorized that this is a legitimate religious experience Hmm. or some sort of spiritual experience yeah but We know that's not true because there's no such thing as God. Fuck God. (laughs) (laughs) We live in a cold material universe that is completely indifferent and unaware of your of your existence. We're all dying. There is no light at the end of the tunnel. Hell exists. <laughs> You're in it. Death is your escape. One day you will be completely forgotten. Work every day and then die. <laughs> Consume. Reproduce to make more laborers for your bourgeois overlords. So the religious experience... um, is there any other examples of a religious experience? Those people that get Pentecostal and they like talk in tongues, like I feel a demon coming out of your chest. I'm gonna suck that demon out. Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I suck the demon out of this man's cavity. Oh man, yeah, that that's <laughs> wild, dude. I I as a child had only ever gone to a catholic mass right you have to stand up repeatedly at easter and crap i've been to one of those stand up sit down kneel hold hands yes they all know it by heart everyone knows it like uh, i still also with you i I don't think I've, i've i've been to a couple weddings but i still remember all the dance moves anyway i went in high school to a pentecostal mass Mm -hmm. completely unprepared for that dancing what that's Sensation. like were they yeah. dancing if you think about if you if you could ever if anyone else could have compared the two experiences a catholic mass is very reserved mm-hmm. you are quiet you don't make eye contact like if you move everybody in the audience or whatever you call it moves at the exact same time but like i was 10 minutes into this other kind of church and first of all there's a rock and roll band on the stage which was way out of left field that should have given me a hint but it didn't it was it Uncle Cracker? <laughs> I, I, maybe it was Jars of Clay. I don't know. <laughs> uh, acoustic hookah. But within ten minutes, there was people running around in the place. I I, did, I had no idea what was going on. There was people laying on the floor, speaking in tongues. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not prepared for that kind of thing and it erupts in your general area, it's um it's unsettling. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean. They're letting their entire being go to this experience that they showed up for. They came there to let go, and they're letting go and letting their feelings just drive their impulses in their bodies. So yeah. that could tie us back to 1500s. But again, you we're not going to Pentecostal Mass, and we're not going for 30 hours at a time, 40 hours, however long these people danced for yeah. in Strasbourg. These yeah. people were dancing for, I mean, these people go to Pentecostal, I imagine, what is it, like an hour or two? Yeah, probably an like hour Like regular church stuff? Yeah. Yeah, so, the, I mean. I, I never made it back again. Yeah, uh, I've heard stories. There used to be a Pentecostal church in my town, and like on the side of the building, it was like, oh, come by, you know, these are our hours, and it would be like, Pentecostal, 
but all the letters had like fire paint. There were black letters, but if you looked, it was like red, like fire bl- lick, flames licking off the letters. Like what the hell? Was it like bitching or was it like threatening? <laughs> no, it was almost like they kind of just kind of added it without kind of making it really a big deal. Like, oh, we're going to make it on fire. Just so you know, if you look close, it's on fire. Like you had to walk on the sidewalk to see it. You drive by in a car, you didn't really see it. That's a strange choice, I and, think. And at the time, I was into like Maiden, Iron Maiden, and like metal, and uh, I was a little kid, and um, I would just think like Pentecost, Pentagram, fire letters. Is that really blood in that fire? Like, forget this Pentecostal shit. Oh, that's fun. Like being a little <laughs> kid, and be like, maybe there's a Satan church that'd be badass, or like that'd be cool as hell. That sounds fun. That reminds me of being a little kid when there was still magic in the world. Yeah. Well, I don't know. If you were a musician and you got hired to play this gig, what would you think? Well, really, I bet musicians probably weren't treated very well. I don't think they got rich. They probably were just singing for their dinner. So did they get forced to play? Were they making them play like day and night? There's some musicians that play for like empty rooms nowadays. They're like, oh, thanks for no one showing up. Like these guys are like, oh, yeah, we got an audience. Yeah, and they All still these people they love us. Look at them. They won't stop. They love us. <laughs> yeah, I've played for a few empty rooms in my day. Yeah, it's like a public practice. Yeah. That's what we used to call it. You just have to move your shit somewhere and then move it back and it sucks a lot and yeah. everybody's sad. Yeah, I've done that. We practice at a freaking bar in Ypsilanti. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Ypsilanti, Michigan. We once uh showed up to play a show that we were scheduled to play in Ypsilanti, and it was the club didn't exist anymore. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Nobody bothered to tell us. It was fun. If you're not familiar with Ypsilanti, it's a town in Michigan. It's a college town. Mm-hmm. Look up Tower of Ypsilanti for a good little laugh. Well, if a plague broke out in your town and you were going to be forced to dance to your death, what would you want to listen to while you did it? You can tweet us your thoughts at dinner in hell pod email us at dinner in hell podcast at gmail.com we're on facebook soundcloud and youtube please don't forget to rate and subscribe on itunes and we're on dinner in hell.com thank you and good night thank you band thank you audience thank you brad thank you Ron.